Hello everyone, my name is Nasko Opi, and I will be presenting our research on the IFC-based generation of semantic obstacle maps for autonomous robotic systems. This paper was written by myself, Dr. Samuel Prieto, and Professor Borja Garcia de Soto, all from the Smart Construction Research Group at New York University Abu Dhabi. We would also like to apologize for not being able to attend the conference in person, but we hope that everyone has an enjoyable experience. In essence, our paper is about a methodology that uses IFC models to generate color-coded semantic obstacle maps that can be used for autonomous robotic systems or ARS, and also to create JSON files that contain helpful information for those ARS. So why exactly do we need to connect BIM and ARS? Firstly, there's the fact that BIM models contain rich semantic information that is usually untapped. And there's the fact that ARS deployment often consists of manual preliminary site mapping which is tedious and time-consuming for large and complex sites. Currently, there is no direct interface that allows ARS to access the rich information present in BIM, and finding a way to connect the two will allow a reduction in deployment time for ARS on-site and also augment the autonomous navigation capabilities using information already available in BIM. Bridging this gap essentially removes the need for preliminary mapping and allows for more sophisticated autonomous navigation. Then why are we considering IFC files? Well, first of all, IFC is non-proprietary and platform neutral, meaning that it is compatible with any BIM software and it facilitates interoperability between them. Because of that, IFC can be considered as a universal standard for BIM. Secondly, there's the fact that IFC has an object-oriented class structure, as shown in the figure on the right, meaning that each element has attributes that are easy to access and parse, making it a good candidate for the extraction of semantic information. So this is an overview of the whole methodology in our work. It consists of three main parts, which are IFC parsing, storing parse data, and obstacle map generation. And I will go in detail about each part in the next slides. Firstly, we have IFC parsing, which was handled using the IFC OpenShell library on Python. IFC OpenShell is an open source and up-to-date parser, and it is robust to the different IFC schemas such as IFC 2x3 or IFC 4. It is able to generate standardized geometry for every IFC element representation, which is useful considering that those representations vary a lot between schemas and even within the same file. This is the main reason why we are using IFC OpenShell rather than a custom parser, as dealing with the different representations would be a waste of time when an up-to-date parser is already available. So we use IFC OpenShell to obtain the IDs and attributes of each IFC element and also to extract their geometry in a standardized format. Next is the storage of parse data, and for that we focus on attributes that are useful for navigation. Exam examples of this include door heights and widths, door operation types such as swing left or swing right or revolving, and the number of steps in a stair flight. For the scope of this paper, we consider door operation types, which would be really useful information for autonomously interacting with a door to open or close it as the ARS navigates between spaces. This information is parsed and it is stored in a JSON file. The reason we chose JSON, JSON files is because they are pretty universal and they can be easily interpreted by ARS, and also because they have a key value pair structure which allows them to be quickly queried from. Only the most important navigation information from the IFC should be kept in the JSON so as to keep it lightweight. This way, information queries can happen quickly, which is important for real time applications. Finally, we have the generation of obstacle maps. So for that, what we do is we begin by using the geometry information previously extracted to generate a mesh for each element. And the way we add semantic information to the mesh is by color coding it based on the type of element it represents. For our paper, we only consider three types, which are solid obstacles such as walls and furniture that we represent in black, doors and windows that we represent in green, and stairs in yellow. Examples of those generated meshes can be seen on the right with a door, a wall, and a spiral staircase. For the ARS, black would represent obstacles to avoid, green would represent horizontal connection between spaces, and yellow would represent vertical connections. The next step is to create a mesh for each IFC space as well and to find the coordinates of its centroid, which is recorded for a later step. Next, we combine all generated meshes based on the location of the element in the IFC model to form a unified color-coded mesh, which essentially represents the entire building. Once we have that, we can slice it at predetermined heights based on the height of, the, of our ARS, which we can vary. We take a number of slices from the floor level up to the height of the ARS 
and we stack them up to form the obstacle map for that floor. The stacking ensures that all obstacles relevant to the ARS are considered even if the map is two-dimensional. When we have the map, we use the centroid coordinates obtained in step two and plot them so that they can be used as waypoints in applications such as autonomous 3D scanning, where the robot would need to go in the middle of each room to perform a scan, for example. So using this entire methodology, we ran an experiment using a sample IFC file and went through the explained steps as shown. So first, let's take a look at some details about the IFC file. The model used was obtained from IFC Wiki, which is an online repository of IFC files, and it was authored in ARCHICAD 20, which is a popular BIM authoring tool. The file uses the more recent IFC4 schema, and it represents a five-story institutional type building with an area of 850 square meters. It contains multiple door types, which is useful to test our JSON file output, and the floors are also properly divided into spaces so that we can use it to test the waypoint generation. So this is the standard floor plan of the ground floor that we extracted using Revit. And as you can see, it contains no semantic, semantic information and has limited functionality for autonomous systems. Next, we generated the unified color-coded mesh that represents the entire building. And as you can see, we have the doors and stairs properly color-coded throughout the model, with the doors in green and the stairs in yellow. Finally, using that unified mesh, we are able to obtain our obstacle map by taking slices from it. This is an example of an obstacle map. It represents the basement of the building, and we can see the doors coded in green, stairs in yellow, and solid obstacles in black, effectively adding semantic information to the map. We also have the centroids plotted in red at the center of each space, and they can be used as waypoints for certain applications. We can also take a look at a snapshot from the JSON file. This part represents a revolving door, and at the top we have the element ID, followed by the mesh coordinate information, and finally the door type and dimensions. So overall, the generated obstacle maps can reduce deployment time for ARS, improve their navigation capabilities, and can be easily implemented into existing navigation systems. Some limitations of this method include the fact that IFC models may not be entirely accurate, and the fact that the progress state depicted in the IFC model may not match the current site conditions. Especially for applications that happen during construction, for example, uh, which may also imply unexpected obstacles on site. The last two drawbacks are sort of explained by the fact that the map is mainly meant to replace the preliminary mapping process and not to actually be a definitive map of the site. The idea is that the map is updated as the ARS performs autonomous navigation protocols, so, uh, such as SLAM. In conclusion, this study proposes a methodology that uses IFC to generate color-coded maps and JSON files that effectively act as an interface between BIM and ARS. In terms of future work that can address some of the limitations, we can account for the progress state using the IFC schedule element, which can be added to the IFC models to know which elements are present as obstacles at a particular point in time. We can also increase the detail of color coding by differentiating between more elements to add more semantic information for more sophisticated navigation. For example, an ARS may need to handle obstacle avoidance differently for a wall compared to furniture. Lastly, the waypoint generation could also be made more sophisticated to account for irregular shaped spaces and obstacles that obstruct the centroid positions. That was it. Thank you for your time and please let us know if you have any questions.